On the ninth day of Christmas my postman gave to me nine British sheep breeds. Hello and welcome to the 12 skeins of Christmas. So if you've been following along so far you'll know that every day I've been doing a particular skein. Um, I've also been talking to woolly producers and asking about their work and I've also will be showing you <laughs> British wool researchers so that category is basically just for Zoe <laughs> and today I'll be talking about Zoe Fletcher who is the woolist. Zoe has done a PhD research course for four years uh, and that was um, grant funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council so she basically got the opportunity to go and research 72 different sheep breeds around the country, uh, find information about them, compile it and all that kind of stuff, live in the dream <laughs> um, and she's really lovely, she's answered some of my questions, been really helpful. I'm just going to read a little bit from her website which I thought was um, encapsulated sort of what she does, what she enjoys. So her research project was born out of the desire to reconnect with local raw materials, producers and makers connected to the craft, textile and fashion industries. Um, so if you go on her website she's got one page for sheep and that has all the different breeds so the 72 different breeds that you'll find on this tote bag that I got from her <laughs> and it's got lovely pictures and it just tells you the fleece, uh, colour, the breed, the staple and what else? Micron count so imagine you're a designer coming um, at a project you want to use British wool for you just go to that website and you say okay what what's Romney oh, okay it's lustrous it's got a long staple it's is it going to be good for shawls is it going to be good for socks and you can find out that sort of information on there uh, she also has a blog and I don't think she's had too much on there since um, 2018 and that's because she had a little hiatus to have a baby <laughs> and I think 2021 is the year of the baby I know about five people who have had babies <laughs> and actually I've made this little hat pattern that she kindly test knit for me for her baby but it's a little bit too small she sent me such a cute picture of it just perched on her baby's head. I think this pattern is more naught to three months. Her baby's one year old now um, so it was just perched on her head. She looked really cute but um, yeah too small. <laughs> but she said if it was just a couple of inches longer you know it could have been um, a nice baby beanie. So I was talking about Char Charlie Button's yarn the other day and she's been looking at the tea towel that I got her to go with um, my British Breeds A Woolly Exploration advent calendar. In every advent calendar there was a sheepy stitch marker, um, a tea towel of British Breeds um, and 5 gram nano skeins and a little bit of information about the type of breed from that deck. Um, so Charlie has been showing all these pictures from the British She Breeds tea towel and they're brilliant pictures from Zoe. I was trying to name all of the sheep breeds the other day but I'm not sure how successful I was. Did anyone count how many I'd got? <laughs> Maybe you can tell me down here and we'll see how many points I get. Um, I actually snapped up when I was buying the tea towels I think I snapped up the last tote bag in her shop. <laughs> and um, yeah they're really cute. Uh, I also got this um, sheep breeds notebook which I think and these are all in Zoe's Etsy shop um, but I think this will be really good for writing to-do lists in for the new year so I can try and be a bit more organised. 
as we're a little bit Cotswold themed already because I've got this um, porter from Hook Norton Breweries which is not that far from here um, I think you do have to go down a lot of lanes and t uphill and down dale to find to find them or uh, I think I drove past them when I was lost once going somewhere in the Cotswold um, yeah so as I've been drinking this lovely porter I thought I'd talk to you about the Cotswolds and actually tomorrow I might talk to you about Witchwood Spinner I will talk to you about Witchwood Spinner and um, she made some handspun that I got and it went really quickly in her shop but it's lovely and um, there's one on here um, Historically they're supposed to have this lion's head mane and they've got this golden fleece and you can just imagine they're massive. Um, I should write down here how tall they actually get. They're a big sheep. Me and my friend were helping out a farmer dagging a ewe once because she had a little bit of fly strike and my friend fell over. They're really powerful sheep. Um, I suppose even the little sheep can be quite powerful sometimes um, but yeah my friend was fine and we um, and ended up being able to dag her successfully um, but there, if you imagine in the olden days having a sheep that's good for meat because they've got a big frame and all of that fleece you could even get because of their long staple you could even get a cash crop um, halfway through the year so you've got shearing time and you've got a little bit that you could get extra if you needed some extra money at the start of the year because of such a long staple. So what a practical sheep. And they're quite rare in England. By the time this comes out I will hopefully have reorganised my wool. Uh, I mentioned the craft catastrophe where all my wool fell over and it was like a mountain of wool like that. Wool. And I thought I'd tell you about this new project bag that I got because I got it from my friend and it's really lovely. She said that she'd gone into a shop, looked at it and just gone, oh that's for Alex. <laughs> uh, yeah and she's so right. <laughs> Let's see. Woo! <laughs> so um, and how brilliant is this? It's got a drawstring so you've got like 20 centimetres more space more volume as well um, and now this is where I'm keeping my 100% um, wool wools there you go <laughs> and this is a lovely I think it's like cotton or linen bag and yeah so that's nice and organised does anyone have any tips on how to organise their stash how you organise your stash I'm thinking Maybe I need a chest of drawers. Or does it want to be see-through? Do I just want metal racking? I don't know. I'm going to have to figure out something. Um, maybe it's easier to build myself some sort of bespoke wool stack. Wool store, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, so talking about presents, um, I decided to treat myself. Well, I got my sister to treat me. <laughs> To this lovely um, Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company wool. Now if you haven't seen Emma's podcast, video podcast she's on YouTube as Woolly Mammoth Fibre Co and she lives in Northern Ireland and she makes wool, um, gets it spun up, it's local to her. Some of the wool is just from like a farm down the road in Northern Ireland. I'm gonna, I was gonna say Ballymena but I think it's Bally, Ballymoney? Um, that she lives and this is her natural sock DK which is a mixture of BFL and Cheviot. So BFL is really really soft and Cheviot is quite hard wearing kind of wool. Yeah and she's got some lovely photography and she does a vlog so you should definitely go and check her out. Um... Oh yeah, she's a natural dyer as well. So she's, I think she's dyed this with Madder and it said coral on her website. And yeah, if you, if I'd have, if you'd have said to me, oh, it's coral, 
this is the colour I would have expected it to come out exactly so that's brilliant and I think it will make a nice hat um, and oh I'm gonna have so many hats by the time the year is out because I seem to just keep making them now uh, and um, if there's any of you out there who've been commenting it's been really lovely to hear people excited about bats to hats um, so I'm gonna start a hashtag at some point uh, I'm not sure whether I should do a sort of February to March kind of one or if maybe hat season's out and I should do one in June to August but it'll definitely be a spin along knit along crochet along or a sal cal cal if you will um, and it'll be really fun for people to get involved. I don't know if I'll be able to get a prize maybe if I do a pattern where you can get the pattern uh, then I could be able to get a prize for it um, following along the lines of get some ideas from the Camerbornia mystery knit along I think that one worked really well um, everyone got a pattern and then there were extra bits along the way that were really fun so uh, maybe I'll be able to do something like that um, but yeah that's it It'd just be a little bit of fun really <laughs> and it's nice to hear people want to get their spinning wheel out and maybe get some bats uh, I talk a bit more about that yesterday if you want to go back and look at, at the previous days I've asked Zoe some questions about her life and so I asked her what her favourite skein of wool or was or what her favourite sheep was and she said hmm that's a tough one as I've always feel disloyal to all the other beautiful breeds but her first big project was involved with Derbyshire Gritstone purely because her dad knew the farmer and they grazed behind their house uh, so that was the first breed that she studied in detail. Um, she said she tried some shearing, but she's definitely not a shearer. Um, she took the whole the she took the fleeces through the whole process from sheep to skein to Yorkshire to be processed, and she collected it back to knit it and naturally dye it. So she said she keeps a skein somewhere for um, in her treasured treasured things boxes. And I said, how did you decide to get involved in the wool industry? And she said, I was working as a knitwear designer and getting frustrated trying to find out answers to why some 100% wool yarns felt or acted differently to others, never mind being able to find British made yarns and find out the ethics between and find out the ethics behind them in different qualities, quantities or colours and price points. <laughs> so I said, what is your favourite part of working with people in the wool industry? And she said everyone has been so helpful and is so excited to share their stories and expertise and she loves that you can meet someone that knows how to help and can solve the next problem along. She said I've met so many different people connecting in so many weird and wonderful ways it's lovely to see it from the outside and now from the inside a little bit and be able to work things through and figure out how to connect people at different stages involved in different ways and I think yeah that's really what she does is connecting people and trying to help them make the most of wool and designing with wool so that's brilliant. I said have you had to do anything different for Covid? Um, and she said it was a bit weird um, and that she's had quite a strange Covid journey because she was in her sort of maternity baby bubble <laughs> um, for the first half of the year and she says she's slowly starting to realise how things may have to be done differently for future plans and I said <laughs> this is my favourite thing um, I said what is your favourite woolly garment or product that you've designed she said the strangest favourite thing she's designed or made is a hand-knitted Branston pickle jumper for one of their Christmas ad campaigns. She had to remake the jar a couple of times because they said uh, they wanted it to look more handmade. <laughs> it's funny isn't it? Like um, if it's handmade it's not well made <laughs> or something which isn't 
which isn't always true, but I, when people say, oh, this could have come from a shop to me about things, I'm like, yeah, that must be a compliment. <laughs> um, I don't know if they sell Branston pickle in many places. I've definitely seen some in a French English shop somewhere. Um, but it's, it's basically, well, it's a pickle. It's like if you put brown sauce, do you get brown sauce at the places? Anyway, yeah, so uh, it's a bit like a chutney, I suppose. I don't, I don't actually know. What's even in Branston pickle? Well, you know what? We're finding out a lot of useful things here, guys. I'm gonna put down here what's in Branston pickle. Chunks of something. <laughs> Uh, anyway, okay, on to the question. I'm always going on a tangent. Um, do you have any special Christmas traditions? And she said, knitting wise, pretending each year I'm going to be super prepared and make everyone little gifts in plenty of time. In reality, there's a lot of late nights and a few changes of plans towards the end. Yeah, I'm like that with the uh, knitting present deadlines. Like, yeah, do you want that Christmas thing for Easter? Um, Otherwise, she says, bacon butties on Christmas Eve at my mum's house. Always a heated debate over whether you have red or brown sauce with it. Ketchup. Definitely ketchup. <laughs> yeah, we have that too. Ooh. Brown sauce. That's just wrong. I'm not passing judgement if you partake of brown sauce yourself, but ketchup. <laughs> or butter. Or just butter. Can you tell I haven't had lunch yet? Um, not lunch. <laughs> Is it tea time now? It's probably about four o'clock. I think I'm losing the light, so it feels like it might be a bit later. Um, yeah, but definitely always Yorkshire puddings on the Christmas dinner. They're my favourite bit. Ah, see, we're not allowed Yorkshire puddings at Christmas. How weird's that? That'd be really nice. It'd probably be, do you know what? Sometimes I think the turkey's too much. After you've got the roast potatoes, parsnips, carrots, broccoli, maybe broccoli, cauliflower, cheese, gravy. Once you've got all that on your plate, you're probably like, oh, yeah, I've got to put turkey on here somewhere. <laughs> I quite like those Yorkshire puddings where it's like the whole plate is a Yorkshire pudding. I've realised I've said this a lot. Um, if you hadn't had a Yorkshire pudding, it's... It's like a little pie, but it's like bread, or, okay, Google a picture of a Yorkshire pudding and maybe make one, because if you go on Delia, it should probably give you a good recipe, and they're not that easy, that, they're not that hard to make, and they're really good, and you should try them if you don't know what they are. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, Zoe says she'd quite happily swap the turkey out if it meant extra Yorkshires. Um, brilliant. Oh, and she's put a little picture for me of the... Uh... Okay, so thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the 12 Skeins of Christmas. Tune in for the next, I think we have three. So we've got Witchwood Spinner, Uradel Yarns and Manx Lochtum Produce left. Um, so they'll be really interesting. Okay, bye!
I'm just opening up my calendars for this year. I'm attempting this one. I'm Falchuk. 